What's up, y'all? We are back at the Million Dollar Pool Project, and it is four day for the Supercar Garage. The guys were out here right and early at 6 a.m. Let's get into that footage and catch you up to where we are right now. All right, hold on, hold on. Before we get into that, here is what we've been up to. So if you remember, we excavated this whole area down to grade for the supercar garage. We dug out the elevator pit and the new stairwell. Now the guys had to get up the wooden forms for the perimeter of this slab, and then they brought in the fill dirt. And then what they did after that is they dug out those grade beams. You see that hash mark pattern all throughout the area. And then they put black poly over all of this so that no water and no moisture can come up from the bottom of the slab. Then they're gonna get all of the rebar into the grade beams, the rebar mat on top. We're gonna get that inspected by the engineer. And then that brings us to today. What's up guys? We are out here bright and early at the Million Dollar Pool Project. It's about 6.15 in the morning and the first concrete truck is about to get here. Uh, we got about seven or eight trucks coming in today to pour and uh, we're just ready to keep this project rolling. Let's go. I just want to give a quick shout out to our project manager, Grant Buchanan. I've been watching him work the last couple months and he's taught me a ton. And for this project in particular, just there's been massive amounts of coordination, planning and problem solving. You got an existing structure, you're excavating, you're adding on, you're changing floor plans, you're changing plumbing, you're doing a ton of different stuff. And I know John would agree with me here, having a guy like Grant that can just think on the fly, problem solve. His position, not only do you need to know a lot about construction, but you need to have really good critical thinking skills and uh, really just be ready to show up and fix stuff every single day. We've already got the second truck rolling in. They're uh, cleaning out the first truck right now and we're about to get started with the second. It's 7 a.m., these guys are moving. This is one of our last hot days in Austin. It's gonna get up to 103 degrees today. So they're really trying to work quick and beat this heat. and early at the million dollar pool. And you know what, to keep me going today, I am slamming ends all day. If you've been following the channel, you know that this is a massive sponsor of the channel and we can't thank them enough. Today, I am on the energy blend. Each pouch packed with 50 milligrams of caffeine to keep me going all day. I like to pop about one an hour, just so I'm not overloading caffeine kind of at the beginning of the day and I can keep it going. Now, when I get back to my desk and I need to do some office work, I love the Focus Blend. Packed with nootropics, keeps your mind active, helps me grind through some paperwork. Use promo code JGB at checkout at nzepouches.com. That's promo code JGB for 15% off now, let's get into the pour. This slab is not only holding up all these retaining walls, but there's a second level above it. And there's some huge monolithic concrete cantilevers for the structures. There's some really cool stuff. So this slab is holding up a lot of weight. Today, our goal is to get all of this pour. We also have the stairwell and the elevator pit. We're doing the same thing. We're pouring that bottom slab. We are on truck four out of probably six or seven today. We are lucky enough to have our own in-house <laughs> Professor Buchanan here. He is actually teaching a course at Austin Community College on concrete. Yeah, it's going great, man. Two classes in, I geek out on this stuff, so when I come out here and actually see it happening, it gets me stoked. Yes, and for all you nerds out there or who want more nerdy information, I want Professor Buchanan to talk a little bit about the technicalities. First, let's talk about the mix design, what a mix design is, and how important it is for us to coordinate with our engineer to make sure we're using the correct mix design. Yeah, great point. So, as contractors, we're not the people that are making the hard decisions on what goes into the building. We just make sure the right stuff is used. We have something called a mix design that is typically called out by the structural engineer. Uh, that mix design talks about what the 
PSI or the uh, pounds per square inch of compressive strength that that concrete can hold. Hold on, hold on. Yep. Talk a little bit about that. Compressive strength. Compressive strength. Yes, let's talk a little bit about what that means on the PSI. When we get a concrete, usually the first thing that we're looking at is how much weight it can hold in a compressive downward force. Downward, not, not sideways. sideways. Yeah, so concrete's really good in compressive strength, not good in tension or flexure, which is why we put rebar in it. This is why we have the rebar, and I always call it a stitching of the rebar, because yep. all that's doing is it's holding the tensile strength this way. The compressive strength is great, and we have to meet those requirements of the mix design, but I digress, continue. Yeah, no, that, that's spot on. So the mix design essentially tells us how to bake the cake, right? The, the engineer will say, I need the cake to have this kind of properties be this strong, have a certain slump and also have a very important thing that we monitor closely called a water to cement ratio. Concrete has three parts, water, cement, and aggregate, rocks. And the rocks give it that hard compressive strength. They kind of call it like the building blocks. Mm -hmm. And then you have cement, which reacts with water and ends up creating this like Velcro. And that glue takes the rocks and kind of binds them together on a molecular level. The more water you add to a mix, the less strength it has. Yes. So one of the first things we look at when we're looking at the back of a truck and it starts, the concrete starts to come out, like, all right, how wet is this? You know, is it within the design parameters of the mix design? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mix designs also outline things like how much fly ash, how much sand, you know, there's a list of 10 things and it gives us a weight and we know exactly what it should look like. Right, and yep. but we have it all packed down. We got our mix design, got it approved by the engineer. Yep. We come out here and we're looking. Grant is stepping around in the concrete, just looking at, like you can kind of test the slump of the concrete. Slump's a good indication of our water to cement ratio. Yes. And it's also a good indication of how workable the concrete is. A low slump mix is stronger, but is it's less, less pliable, yeah. right? Right, and these guys are doing this. You know, they're going to be out here for hours, right? They start at 6 a.m., they'll be done by maybe noon or one, but then they have to finish it. And working this concrete when it's dry is bad, bad finished product, and it stresses your guys out. Yeah, yeah. So we look at the slump a lot to kind of give us an indication of how strong the concrete is, as well as like, is it workable for the guys? You know, we've been here for a little over a year because this design has been changing so much, but. I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. We just have about two more pours. We're gonna get these walls up here and the elevator pit, and then basically finish everything off with the top slab up there. And then we're on structural steel, baby, and we are gonna be rolling. The main slab is all fun and dandy, but let me tell you where the real important stuff comes into play. Down over here, we normally really wouldn't have to have this if this was just a regular foundation, right? All the foundation is in there. The grade beams will hold themselves up with the form on the perimeter. Look at how big our footing is here. This is three feet by 18 inches deep, just as extra support for this massive wall that's gonna go up. This is a 10 foot tall wall that's also gonna be holding in all the backfill behind it. Now, another thing that I wanna point out, when we excavate, this is why we have to over excavate when you're doing these types of walls so that you can fit in your footings. When we come back in and like along the back side and the sides over there where earth is gonna be touching these retaining walls, we have to waterproof the whole thing because concrete is a porous material. If water is prolonged contact with it, it can seep through and imagine that would be a disaster. Our client's gonna have a couple million dollars worth of cars in this garage alone. Getting water in there is detrimental. So you're gonna see in the videos to come, after we pour this wall, we're gonna be waterproofing all of this and then we're gonna do a gravel backfill behind it and then finally soil. Joey boy, what's happening? You look like a man in need. Have you ended up today? Dude, no, I forgot my can. Can I have yours? All right, since you really need it. All right, thanks, man. <laughs>
All right, y'all, uh, we're back in the office. We obviously filmed this out on site during this morning's placement, but we had a little technical difficulty, so we're doing it again back here. Um, during this video, I was talking about the use of floating forms within the elevator pit and the elevator sump pit. Sometimes we have, in this case, like a slab depression or a lower slab, AKA the elevator pit, within our original forms. So what we do is we hang the elevator pit from either pieces of two bys or rebar and suspend them within the placement. That way you essentially have a wall where the concrete steps down and creates this kind of right angle. The reason why we do this at elevators is because you have your slab, right? That you walk out onto when you get out of an elevator, but the elevator car itself actually goes below that slab. So you need to have space below your, I guess call it our finish floor, where the machine or the cab can drop into. So we call this an elevator pit. This is in our elevator pit here, it's one foot below our slab, but then we have another floating form within our elevator pit for our sump pit. Elevator pits are naturally, usually the lowest place within a building and lowest places tend to gather water. So what do we do? We add a sump pit, which is where we'll end up installing a sump pump, which will gather any of this kind of loosely reoccurring water to make sure it gets out of the building safely. We're also gonna talk a little bit about the soil here on site. We've been getting a lot of comments about, wow, the excavation and what are we doing for safety and protection? And uh, I'll take a moment to talk about kind of like the OSHA regulations behind it. So because um, OSHA allows us to classify soil in four different types um, as either A, B, or C. So A being the best, B being the middle one, or C being the worst. We also have a totally different type of classification called stable rock. In stable rock, you're actually allowed to excavate vertically and have these sheer walls knowing that it's not going to like collapse or, or fall on people. So that's why we're able to have this 30 foot wall behind us is because it is undisturbed natural native rock. Now, if this rock had been previously worked or something, that would be different because we are literally just carving right into solid rock. Um, we're good to do what we want with it. We did actually include a little bit of shoring in our project, but that's because that area had previously been disturbed. That's where the old retaining wall was placed for the original uh, foundation wall. Um, it had some gravel backfill. So that's why in our other videos of the elevator pit, you see the shoring is because that rock had previously been disturbed and was not natural. Yet again, another successful pour. I mean, gosh, this is probably like the eighth or ninth pour we've had on this property. We're probably approaching about a thousand yards of concrete, which is just mind blowing to me. Today went off without a hitch. That is to be expected because we put so much time and effort on the front end and we just color in the lines on the back end. Now, coming up next, we've got the foundations and footers poured for the elevator pit, the stairwell, and the supercar garage. Next up, we're gonna get all those retaining walls poured. So we're gonna be forming those up, bringing the rebar up to the height that we need, then we're gonna get those walls poured. After that, we gotta waterproof all of those walls. Then we'll do all of our backfill, make sure we got all of our drainage pipes in, and then we are done with foundation on this site. My God, I can't even believe that's a real thing. Then we will be on to structural steel. This is our biggest structural steel package ever. You guys are not gonna wanna miss this. We're gonna be updating along the way. Then we're gonna be rolling right into framing, and then we're gonna start all of our MEPs, and we're just gonna keep this puppy rolling. You'll see progress every week. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. I just love how the channel is growing. We're having some real awesome sponsors that are helping us pour more money, more effort into all of our videos, and that's more of what you can expect in the future. Love y'all, see you on the next one.